Okay, back over here. So we're gonna do a little bit of valve adjustment. So we're on the compression stroke right now, top bed center. See this one's on the overlap stroke. See the valve is open. So they're both closed. Your top center, you adjust both these two valves here, what you need. So you can see how this one here is pretty much right about where it belongs. This one has a little bit of a gap in it here. So we have to adjust these up a little bit. So numbers you can use is four, six, five, seven, six, eight, six by nine on a nitrous bike. <laughs> but, uh, adjust them however you want to adjust them. So uh, easy on a street bike motor that's brand new, I'll go six by eight. That way we got enough clearance to start and run a few times. You have to come back and adjust it. So you can run as much as seven by nine also if you want. It's just strictly a matter of how how far you want to go. Now this is going to change when you put the motor mounts up on here and all that. So this is kind of just an initial go at it. So I'm going to go six by eight. So this intake is tight. See, we didn't grind enough off that. See, we put the thickest nut on the one we have no room. <laughs> there, almost, almost got it. Is that the six or the eight? That is, that's six. Okay, a little bit tighter. So you see how I do this, Bill? Mm -hmm. See, it's a little tight, see? So you just tighten it up a little more. Tighten both wrenches together, and it works. Got a tight spot that's going back corner, kind of. The valves and the lifters are not exactly on the same plane. Yeah. So the tight spot on this one is on the about the 10 o'clock position on the, on, toward the back side. And there's a little bit of a burr on the end of this too, I think, or something, I'm not sure. Okay, that one works good there. Now this one over here, we got a little room. We have a lot of room on this one. This one here, we have almost nothing for adjustment. So if that goes down much more, we're gonna have a problem. This one we got a lot. So next time we do a motor, make sure you put the worn-out lifters on the intake. <laughs> Don't put it on the exhaust side. All right, that one's tight right now. Now these are going to have to be readjusted after we get the motor mounts on here and in the bike because everything kind of moves a little bit. Okay. But this is just an initial adjustment. So that one's tight. So now we just tighten it some more. So I'm doing a 6 by 8 6 on the intake, 8 on the exhaust. Drop that down to four by six once the motor's broken, and if you want to, or keep it up a little looser so you don't have to go in there as often. <clears throat> see, it's tight, see? Yeah. It's very tight. Just trying to cut the damn thing off. Six is good though. <laughs> Luckily, these don't move very much when they're when they're uh, hot. You know, they change. They don't change much. Yeah, it looks like they're all tight in the same spot. It's on that back corner. So these things are going to pound themselves in a little bit, I imagine. And Self-generate clearances as they want to. Definitely. Doesn't want 
tight anymore. There we go. All right, so those two are done. A minute. Can we do this? Can we finish this week sometime? Yeah. So I got to try to get the covers down and tighten them. <laughs> That'll be fun. I'll keep playing some more. All right, rest break. You're dying over there. All right, by myself now. Okay, I'm gonna go adjust the other valve now. So now we gotta turn the motor over. Actually dropped the wrench on the floor. Yeah, actually dropped it on the floor. I knocked it on the floor, different. Oh, well, he said he wanted the motor mount here tight. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. Or not motor mount, but motor sprocket over here. So this is just lightly tight. Oh, the taper held on good. That's a plus. Uh, with my steel hammer. Okay, this is on taper, so you just hit it with a hammer and I'll pop it. I hit the end of the thread. That's not good. Keys on the bottom, it's still in there. Okay, so what I like to do, I like putting Loctite on these things so they don't fall off. So usually I use sleeve retainer on the good stuff. Get my rag out. Make sure there's no oil or grease on there. So I make it so it's permanently installed basically what we're doing here. So put a decent amount on there. A little more on here. Get a little red. Oh, a little more than I needed. So that's on the threads. So you use sleeve retainer on the sprocket and red on the nut. Okay, so there's a nut. It's an old nut. Should still work good though. Let me hit the thread enough to make it hurt at any. Okay, I just give a couple blips here. One more. That's pretty tight. The nuts flush with the shell, so these means you're on there pretty damn good. Okay. That's not gonna be falling off anytime soon, that's for damn sure of that. Okay now. Can do this. Okay, now I go ahead and turn the motor over. We're going backwards. Well, the intake valve's all opening over there now. These two valves just closed. That's the top dead center is coming up on compression stroke. There's the first one comes up there. The second one's over here because we're going backwards. So it's all the way up, like right there. It's top dead center. <coughs> so I can go ahead and adjust the valves on that one. So we're going to do the 6x8 again. Still got the same fuel gauges out. Let's drop back on down here. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, oh, lots of clearance on that lifter. These two have lots of clearance. So that front intake, which had the biggest adjuster on it, is it? Eh, second biggest. Where's it? No, it is the biggest. Yeah, that's the biggest adjuster, and that's the one that has the least amount of clearance. That's good planning. So, screw this up by hand until you get up near the top. You can hold that one and bring the bottom one down. Just enough 
room you can't get your fingers in there. Things are finger tight, but I can't hold them. Okay. Six is this one. Way more than six. It's almost half a turn there. Still loose. Flat, too flat. Tight. And almost going. That's almost good. So now we're just going to torque the piss out of it here. Flat. And we're in there. Okay, we might have seven thou on that, but it doesn't matter. As long as it's not tight. Doesn't matter if they're slightly loose. That must be the eight. Yep. And torque this down and then pull it down. Still, you loosen it, <clears throat> tighten the bottom nut, and tighten them both. There we go. Now we're getting snug. Now we're getting a little extra torque. That. There you go. All right, we'll be back. Interruptions. Okay, onward. So I'm gonna try to get the valve covers down there. Pretty interesting to get down a lot of times. So this is the tool here that it takes. I've uh, cut this back a long ways and ready all the edges so you can get it in there tighter. Cause it gets really tight, jammed up on these things. So I'm going to try to get in here and do this. Now I got some special tools that we made. These wooden block things here, which hopefully we can get underneath here and push down on the cover and get them to go down. Because these things do not like to drop. So we made these fit in there. That one's too thick. This one here fits in there. You put something up here at the base. On a, on a thick part of the fin up under here, not on the outside edge. And you tilt it up and you slide this cover down. And as you work it down, you go ahead and start turning this wrench when you get down to the thread. Once it gets started, it'll pull itself down. Now a lot of times, these uh, the seals in here will be on there so damn tight, it'll actually compress the spring. You have a gap like that. And once you get it all the way down here tight, you take a hot air gun, you heat this whole thing up with a hot air gun, at some point the spring tension will overcome the drag on the, on the rubber in there and it'll go up and go up to where it belongs. So that's one of the tricks I found over the years. So these things are kind of interested how to get these down. Now the tool I made before was uh, made out of a piece of quarter and steel and I'd go underneath the, underneath this, um, oh, the spigot right here. Now this is uh, a little bit tight in here so we'll have to see what we can do. So I'm going to try to put these down. Now you want to get these down before you deal with the distributor because it's going to be a pain to do the distributor. It'll be a pain to get these down once the distributor's in here because the distributor takes up this whole space. So, <clears throat> so we're going to see what we can do here. All of these things get to be interesting at times. Alright, so let's see what happens here. Didn't move, that's the first problem. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna start by using an extension. <clears throat> did it move or did the extension just fall out? Oh. Not 
supply working. Switch over the bigger side. Yeah, the whole valve spring's moving. And these are stiffer than stock springs, so it's called not moving. That one moved protestingly, but it's moving. Switch over to the thicker board. Okay, that one's going down. Okay, I need something in between here. Half inch socket or something. <clears throat> Use the extension to hold it. Okay, a little bit further. to a three-quarter socket. It's a little bit on the big side. I think we're all the way down against the top here now. <sighs> so how are we going to do this now? Drop down to a 11 16 socket. all the way in there we have we'll go back like a half inch socket see that's as far as it's going to go so I can't force it down anymore it's all the way down the problem is I got to be I have to put pressure on it and turn it at the same time and I don't have what I need to make this work. So, we're going to have to get some kind of a way of holding this thing. That'll be the fun part. I don't think it's uh, tightening up at all. <clears throat> the angle is a little bit off, I think. If this cover doesn't hit straight on the thread, I won't catch the thread. It's a matter of where it's hitting over here. I can't tell. So you have a chamfer on the cover to help bring it in. It looks like I'm on that part right now, but it's hard to tell. <clears throat> right now I can't tell if I'm going to move it or not. So I'm going to keep playing with this a little bit here. Let's see, maybe I can try something different here. Thicker than that.
it's not. I don't think it's going. I'd be shocked if it was moving. So let's see if I'll go up. It's not going up. Yeah, let's see if it started. If it started, it'll come down every time I turn this. I actually think it's going. Yep. Yeah, the threads are going down, so I did get it started, it looks like. So. Couldn't tell I had it started. You notice the valve up here is turning as I do this. Now if you use those real thin James gaskets that it came with that will leak, you wouldn't have all these problems. So you got stuff that fits nice and tight and doesn't leak till you they don't assemble. Okay, so that's already in. Put a little torque on that one. That one is in. So you got one down. And it looks like it's up here at the top where it belongs, so it's in there all the way. Now as these things warm up and take a set, these will be a lot easier to adjust. It's just when these things are brand new, they just stick so damn bad. So this one is not moving. We'll have to heat this up with a hot air gun and then, then go it down. It'll be a lot easier. It's not really cold in here, but it's not warm either. So, so I'm going to try this one and see if we can move this one. Maybe we'll luck out and it'll move. Oh, look at that. Moved. Well, at least it moved until I got down to there. Then it quit. <laughs> the thumb does not make it compress the cover, it makes it compress my thumb when you hit against it. So it went all the way down to there and then just stopped dead in its tracks. It don't want to go no more past that. And we are tearing up this wood pretty good here not helping the situation at all. Yeah, it's losing its, it's losing its edge there. Have to remake these tools, I guess, frequently. Okay, let's try a good part of the tool. Yeah, that's it. We're just collapsing the spring down now, so that's as far as it's going to go. Okay, let's see if we can get this out of the exhaust to go. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like this one. Look at that. I'm just kind of rotating and twisting. It's going down. At least until I got to that point. But that's good. Now I can put this on there and make it just hold it where it needs to go. Yeah, I think I'm right on the thread on this one, so we're just going to go ahead and tighten this up. Oop. Yeah, these things wear away pretty quickly, wood. It doesn't score up the material, the paint, or CAD, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't last very long. I think we got it started. Yep. Give it a good grunt. Okay, the exhaust are down. That one stopped and that one never even moved.
Yep, not moving. All right, so we're going to have to heat these up with a torch and then uh, or a hot gun until I get them with a hot enough they'll go down. If I can't get these down right now without the distributor in here, it's going to be impossible once I put that distributor in there. So it looks like we are coming to a flying halt on making this work. But, uh, oh well, at least I got two of them down. Total loss. And doesn't look like we did any damage to the covers. The tab still looks good on them. You can see what's rubbing off right here on this edge. Oh well, nothing's ever perfect on these jobs. All right, so I guess that's about it for now on that one. The uh, the heads need to be worked on, but I'd rather have the heads off while I put the distributor in because I can see where the pistons are real easy instead of guessing. So I think I'll just leave those on there like that. Especially once you put these covers on, you can't even tell which valve is open or closing. So I'm gonna leave the. I'm going to leave it where it is for now. We'll come back on Monday and work on this some more. That's it for now.